this series we're going to be using a drawing grid. This will help me to show you how to get the shapes into proportion and positioned well inside your picture area. You will need to draw out a grid like this. 12 centimetres by 12 centimetres and then draw two horizontal lines this way and two vertical lines this way. Each of these areas here should be four centimetres by four centimetres each. Of course you could draw your grid a lot larger if you want your drawing to be larger but I think it's quite fun to work on a small scale especially when you're starting out. It's a good idea to use cheap copy paper to do this stage so that you feel less worried about doing it perfectly and you can just enjoy the sketching. Once you've drawn your grid, you can then either draw it each time that you're going to do a new piece of artwork or you can photocopy it several times so you've got lots of grids ready for each drawing that we do. For this project we're going to look at ways to draw and paint the robin starting with some basic geometric shapes. So you're going to need a pencil, a rubber and a fresh drawing grid. So now you can follow me drawing the simple shapes of the body to start with. So let's start on this intersection here and just draw a curved line winding its way around back onto that line and then we're going to go across that corner and then curve the line up until we meet this line here just curve off that corner and then a nice sweeping curve down to this intersection here and then draw a line for those two to meet up. So you've got a nice kind of natural oval shape. So the next thing I want to draw is a circle for the head. So let's start in this square here on this line. And we're just going to take it round probably to about the size of a coin. Just a regular circle so that we want the two to overlap so we end up with something like that. Then I want to draw the eye in. Now I might move the eye later if it's in the wrong place but let's just pop it in there for now and draw a horizontal line going straight out and a little triangle shape there that's going to be the beak so let's go to the other end of the robin now and put a little dot there on the back end of him and maybe do a little dot just in this bottom square here round about there and then join up those two lines And then come to this intersection here and draw another line coming out so you end up with sort of like a long rectangle shape and then you can join those two together. This, will, this shape will change quite a bit when we do the final drawing but it just gets something in position. So then we want to add a wing for the robin so let's do a little dot on this line here and just coming down on an angle like this and another dot about there and let's put a dot in this square round about there and then we're going to join those three up so they're like another triangle shape So then we want our robin to be standing on something, nice twig. So let's start with a dot there, come up to that line, across 
and up come out that way so it's not a really straight line it's just slightly kind of changing direction and then we'll come down to this point here go up to that line so it's the branch that kind of gets wider as it comes down now if you go back to the shape of the body and find a point at about there so it's not in the middle of that square it's just across to the left and draw a line that comes down on an angle this way then go across a bit further to here and draw another line which comes out more of an angle that way and they're the first shapes that we need to draw for the robin so let's now try to refine the shape and see if we can make it a bit more recognisable. So let's take a, a pencil here on the upper part of the robin's back and just follow that line up. Instead of curving back in, take that line up to meet the top of the circle there. So those two connect. And then take your rubber and just remove those inner lines that are there. Just reinforce that shape. And then I want to do the same down this end with the, with the tail. So let's take off a little bit of that, the, the wideness of that curve there Bring our pencil line in and smoothly meet up with the tail shape there. So we're just kind of making a more direct line between the back and the tail. So when we remove those lines inside and the extra thickness that we didn't want, we've got a lovely soft curve there. It's starting to look more like a bird already. So let's do go up to where the beak is. Now the robin tends to have the sort of shape that comes in first. So take a line that's coming in and then that can come down and meet with the body shape that you have. So if I remove those lines and also those intersecting circles we had there we'll see how that tends to look a bit more robin-y it's more the shape that we want to have so let's go back to the tail tail feathers and I want to divide this up so that we can see separate feathers. So I'm just going to start from that point and draw a line upwards there to meet back with the body. And we can do a thinner line that does the same. And then draw a curve that comes to meet the wing there. And I can take away what's left. I've got more of a sort of tapering tail shape. So now let's work on the wing on the side here. So it's going to be a much more curvy line, really. So we could start with the point that we had there and aim to come down to here, but let's make a nice curved line that meets those two together. And then let's take away what's inside that. So 
So I'm going to just be just stop short of the length of that and make a curve into there and back up and round there. So we don't really need that triangle anymore. So let's get rid of that rigid shape and keep the curvy lines that we've drawn. We've got a nice wing shape there. So the robin has feathers that go like this. And from that central point, it comes down like that. So, so these really represent feathers that are sitting on top of each other. And then he has a little one that just tucks underneath like that. So let's rub away the harsh lines and just put the soft curvy feather line that's in there. Now from the tail, you have this line coming inwards here towards the body. That line is going to go underneath that, that wing and come out to meet the body there so that you've got a lovely curve shape happening underneath here. Now you need to think about the markings of the robin as well. So he tends to have like a little Hood there comes round the eye. It works its way down to the red breast. So I've drawn that in as a line so you can get the sense of where the colours and things might be, but when we paint this, we won't have those harsh lines there. Um, we use the paints to do that job. So I'm just going to go back to the robin's eye and make it slightly larger. So draw a larger circle. And then with the beak, so he's got, we've got the, the triangle shape that we did earlier. And if you just draw another triangle shape that comes inwards, into the head that will give you a nice beak there that works so the robin has got where this this wings coming down here of course the same would be happening on the other side of the bird but we wouldn't see that wing because it's tucked behind but we would see just a little bit of feather little bit of the wing coming down there so it's the sh same shape that you've got here that you put in there so then we can have a look at the legs well the legs are going to be very thin in comparison to the body so we don't want to go too wide with this let's make a very very thin double line for the legs, like so, and then here just add a sort of triangle shape at the top of each one because that kind of shows where the legs join onto the body and then we can rub out anything that's inside there. Make sure you've got some nice joins where one pencil line meets another pencil line. And then we can just draw the feet in. Okay. 
Yeah, let's indicate some snow on top of that branch. So kind of create a slightly wavy line that follows the branch shape. And then another wavy line that's below that branch line that you originally drew. And then just remove the original line. Make any adjustments that you want to. Maybe a little bit more snow there. And we could do another little branch that comes off this way. I just want to go back to the robin's back because I feel that it might be a little bit too wide at this bottom end here. So I'm going to just adjust that slightly, just going to make him a bit slimmer than the bottom there. But come up to meet that line. And then lose one side out. Yeah, because we want him to be a bit chubbier in, on this side and a bit more slender on that side. So that looks a bit more balanced. Now I want to transfer my robin onto my art paper, so I'm going to be painting him in watercolour, so I'm using watercolour paper, it's about the same size as the grid. And remember you can either trace this down if you don't have a light box, or you can use a light box like I am, which shines the light through the paper onto the art paper, or you can get a very similar effect if you hold your image up against a window on a bright day and put your paper in front of it, you should be able to get the same effect.
So now we want to think about how we're going to paint our robin. And I've had a little play around with some colours to start with on some spare watercolour paper. And I want to use a bright red, obviously, it's a robin, and some warm yellow. I'm going to use some burnt sienna and some raw umber. And a bit later on, I might use some grey and blue. So you can get those colours ready in your palette. So you see I've got them set out here. Um, my colours, my puddles of colour are quite fluid there, so they're already bleeding into each other, but that will be fine. So if you take your drawing that you've now uh, refined, um, you'll see on mine that I've just rubbed away the, the line that was going around the breast there, just because we don't really need it anymore. It was just an indicator for us. And really I want the paint to kind of blend nicely over that area without there being a line. So what I'm going to do is firstly just paint the robin's breast just with some clear water because I want to try and get some graduation of colour in this section. The best thing to do is just watch me do this first before you start yours because it's one of those things that you have to be quite quick with. You can't sort of do a bit and stop and watch and then do another bit. You have to do it in one go. So I'm painting around the eye there. So not the eye, not the beak. Just that front part of the bird. And I'm going to take some of my red. And just kind of drop it into that wet area. You'll see it starts to want to paint itself really. The paint will go wherever the paper is wet, so you can just let it go and start floating down. Just guide it down a little bit, let it feather out to the side. I want to have it so that it's white down the bottom here, so I'm not going to keep loading more and more red into it. I'm just going to let those colours float down a bit by themselves. I do want to add a little bit of yellow to my red and make it look richer. Just dropping that in there. I've just got my wet clean brush. I'm just going to drag a little bit of that colour down. Just help it go down into this area at the bottom here. And if you want, you can just tilt your paper a bit and then that helps the colour to run down. And if you feel that you've got any areas that are too pale, you can just grab a little bit more colour and add it in and then let the paint just mix by itself softly blend that away Add a little bit more red to the front there. So whilst that's still wet, I want to come back and turn the whole thing around actually. And I want to paint my Robin's wings in. So it's better to do this upside down. I'm going to use the lighter brown. I don't want this to be too severe, so don't go too dark with this. So 
like so. You see a nice soft edge there between those two colours. So you've got to be make sure that you've got enough paint mixed up for the area that you're going to fill. Otherwise it's going to look very dry. Just going to leave a little tiny edge of white paper there. I don't want one colour to bleed into the other. And fill in that shape. Really simple. Put that colour right down to the tail. And then before all of that dries, whilst that's still a bit wet, just take a little bit of your darker brown. Again, not too, don't be too bold with it. And feed it into the end of the tail there. Give your brush a little bit of a rinse out so that it's just wet. And then drag one colour into the other. Just get that nice graduated effect there. It's just very delicate. So whilst that's drying, give your brush a wash and we can just fill in the some of the detail on the tree down here. So um, just make sure that you're happy with your branch and the shape that it is. I've given a bit more detail on mine. And use the lighter brown first. This time we're going to paint into onto a dry area. Don't paint the snow in, just paint around it. And then we need to just let everything dry, just to really get that nice and dry before we do any other layers. Okay, now make sure that your painting is really dry before you do the next stage. You might need to use a hairdryer for this. And um, we're going to go with the darker brown. And I'm using a really fine, small brush. It's got a nice fine point on it. And I just want to paint in the the eye of the robin here. So I'm going to paint in that little tiny circle that we made, but I'm going to leave just a small area of light there. So he's got a bit of a gleam in his eye. That's made him look quite lively all of a sudden. 
and then I just want to create a little bit of shadow areas under his feathers there so using that same brown but not as dark as that just kind of a slightly lighter shade paler shade should I say I just want to do a couple of where we drew those lines where the feathers were just do a little detail there and you can see how just by doing that shadow underneath that lifts that feather off the one that's underneath it makes it look more three-dimensional and we can do the same under here this one and we can do it by adding some more sort of line down here Just helps us to define those shapes a bit more and perhaps we'll add a little bit darker to the wing on the other side of the body that we can't really see very well any areas where you think things might be a little bit more shadowy you can add that darker brown So we left a little bit of a gap between the wing and the body there because we didn't want one colour to run into the other. If you found on your painting that it has, don't worry, it will still look good when you finish the outlines on everything. But I just want to fill mine in a bit more there. So I'm going to use a um, slightly stronger version of my lighter brown and just try and outline that wing a little bit. Finish that off. And you can do the same with the upper edge of the wing if you want to. The brush is nice and fine. Just to give that a bit of definition there. So again, using the darker brown, but not too dark, not too strong. I want to create a little bit of detail on the bark of the branch. I'm just going to do that by adding some lines that kind of curl around the branch. So we know that the branch is rounded, it's not flat. So by adding these thin lines in a curvy way, it helps to define those shapes. A smaller branch they might be going this way so now I want to add the legs of the bird I want these to be very thin and fine so I'm using my very thin brush, I'm using the dark brown and I'm just going to do a very sort of twiggy line on his legs, so very very delicate. I'm now going to introduce a new colour, which is a sort of bluey grey. So hopefully I've got a bit of space in the palette there. You don't need much of this. So I'm using a pale grey and I'm using um, a tiny little bit of blue mixed with that. Tiniest bit. And with this I'm going to some of the snow on the branch. You can see how that grey and blue mix together and make a really nice soft cool colour. Now with snow it is white 
but when you paint it you don't really paint just you know you don't just leave it white because all snow has got um, shadows on it so um, we need to sort of show that with our paints I'm just going to put a little bit of shadow for that snow along this edge No real set way to do this, but you just have to try and imagine that the light is falling on the top of that snow and creating the shadow on this side of it. It's just a really light touch for this. I think we'll do a bit more shadow underneath. Where I'm having this stretched. Just make it a bit more shadowy underneath him. Gives the snow a little bit of structure then. Um, so the other part that we need to do is the beak. But before I go there, I want to create a really soft bluish shadow just underneath the body here. So I'm going to use that same colour that I've used for the snow. Really soft grey. And I'm just going to paint a little bit of shadow underneath his tummy here in a curve and then just getting a wet brush squeeze the water out of it just a clean wet brush not you know you need to kind of remove the water from it by squeezing it out when you do this and that way you can just softly blend that edge so you can see how that makes him a little bit more three-dimensional a bit round a bit more rounded on the body. You can just paint that leg in there as well. It's normally when you paint the shadows on things that they start to come to life. And I think maybe that little bit of leg under there would be in shadow too. And then I'm going to paint his beak in the same grey. Come back to that in a minute. So I've just painted it grey, sort of a light grey. I'm just going to leave that for a moment to dry. I want to come back down to where my branches are and I want to make a bit of a shadow underneath the branch. So I'm going to go back to my darker brown. So we need to water it down. And then just create a shadowy line on the bottom edge. Of each of those areas. Again, wet your brush, squeeze your brush out so that it's not dripping with water and just soften those edges there. Now 
Okay, got a little bit of darker shadow just underneath where the snow is as well. Just a little shadow there. nice and soft so the last thing I think is to come back to the beak I'm just going to turn this around so I can get a good angle and I just want the lower edge of the beak to be darker than the upper edge of the beak and so I'm going to go back to my grey my greyish blue and just the bottom half of it it's slightly darker than the top half so it makes quite a bit of difference when you're looking at the shape of the beak there now to finish off my robin I just want to reinforce some of the outlines again so I've made sure that my painting is really really dry and I've sharpened my pencil and I'm just going to go around now and lightly redraw the outline just to tidy him up Thank you for painting the robin with me today. Hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.